Sing part one. Hope you're singing with us. Now we're going to do hymn number 217. Oh, how I love Jesus. Gracious Lord, we thank you for this new day. We thank you for the blessings of this day. And we thank you for the power of your spirit that connects us wherever we are, with one another and of course with you, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so this hour, as we train our minds on you and our thoughts on you, we ask, oh God, that all of heaven would join in with us wherever we are as we praise your name. And as we bring our supplications and, of course, our praise to you, Lord, we thank you that even in this moment of uncertainty and panic and fear, we have a God that we can turn to, a God who has won the battle for us, a God who gives us hope, a God who saves us. For it is in his name, Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you again. My name is Pastor Daniel, and I have the honor of being the associate pastor, and it's always good to uh, come together uh, in, in the name of, of the Lord. And so I just want to extend a very warm welcome to you, wherever you are. And we want to smile at each other. And we know God is smiling on us from heaven. And that's the most important thing. And we will all emerge victorious in the name of the Almighty God. Here at Parkwood, we continue to serve the Lord. And we serve the Lord by connecting with one another and also by just praising God wherever we are. We know that God is with us. His presence is always with us, and that's really important. So wherever you are, just know that you are in the presence of the Almighty God. I just want to uh, bring a few uh, announcements to your attention as you listen to, uh, you know, to me remotely, and we want you to uh, just pay attention. Again, we're glad that we continue to live stream our services, and so you can actually uh, tune in wherever you are. And for those who have problems, uh, tuning in again, uh, you know our 
uh, in the communications, you know, director is working hard on this to make sure that you just go to our website and you just you know, connect you know, right away. And so again, just um, uh, make sure that you're able to uh, follow those basic uh, instructions and guidance as you uh, join us. Um, next Sunday is Palm Sunday. So again, please join us online for a message about the last week of the life of Jesus Christ, beginning with Palm Sunday. So uh, if you want to put something down, we will be looking at Mark chapter 11, verses 1 to 11. That will be the uh, scripture for the message for next Sunday, which is Palm Sunday. Again, we hope that you can join us remotely, digitally, as again, we continue to uh, prepare for the great uh, you know, event of all times, the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which begins on Palm Sunday, the last week of the life of, uh, of Jesus Christ. We also would like to uh, remind you that our, our Tuesday and Thursday midday prayer uh, you know, session continues. We actually began last Thursday uh, between 12 and 12.30. So we begin at 12 o'clock, 12 noon, and then we end at 12.30. So you can again tune in. It's live, and um, I will be there, uh, and I would like to see all of you, as many as are able, to join in with us. Again, as we pray about what's going on in, in our world, pray for one another, pray for our ministries here, and of course, uh, pray that God will continue to bless us as we allow him to use us for his service. Of course, our Wednesday night Bible study uh, from 6.30 to 7.30, again, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's live, and we want you to join. We were pleased that last week, Wednesday, we had so many people join us. I was told that uh, uh, some of our senior folks who couldn't actually go online, somehow we were able to connect them, and uh, one of them was so excited about it. And so I hope uh, everybody can join us. Uh, you don't need to have a Facebook account. You can still join us, and so we hope that you can do, uh, you can do that. Now, if you want a copy of the handout, I always prepare a handout, which I send out to a couple of uh, members who have requested that. If you would like to, uh, you know, get that handout before the Wednesday night Bible study, please uh, just send me a short note to Daniel D at Parkwood.org. Daniel D, or one word, at Parkwood.org, and I'll be happy to forward that uh, handout to you for the Wednesday night Bible study. Each week, we prepare something about a page so that you can actually follow consistently uh, the Wednesday night Bible study. We want to make it easier for you and for everybody. So again, please, uh, if, if you want that. If you don't have any email account uh, uh, and uh, you still would like me to mail that to you, I'll, I'll be happy to do that. So uh, we want to do whatever we can during this time uh, when we are physically uh, uh, apart from one another so that you can actually uh, enjoy God's blessing. Uh, we want to thank you for your faithfulness and your continued giving uh, to support our ministries here and of course our missionaries uh, scattered around you know, the globe. It's a difficult time for us, but also a very difficult time for them, as you know. And so we need to continue to support them. And so as you continue to give faithfully, uh, you know, we are able to do that important ministry. And I know that that is really something on your heart for us to do. So we would like to draw your attention to the online giving, which is kind of very easy to do. Uh, again, if you go to our website, uh, you can uh, follow the instructions. Just hit the uh, you know, give button and it will take you to wherever you, you want to be uh, to make that uh, 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 you know, you know, giving. Uh, also, you can mail in your uh, uh, envelope. Uh, and we are very pleased that many of our members are doing that. If you mail it in, we actually receive that. Again, we want to thank you for your generosity. Or you can drop off your uh, 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 envelope here in the church office uh, on Tuesdays and Thursdays. The office is open from 10 to 2 p.m. Uh, in fact, actually, most of the big uh, our facilities manager is, is here almost every day. Uh, and so uh, sometimes if you come in at uh, the time is there, you, know, you can actually uh, you know, get access and drop your offer. So we want to thank you. And uh, we are pleased and blessed to have a church that is always giving because we serve a God who is always giving and we are glad that God gives. This morning we are so blessed to have Reverend Chino who will give the word. So when the time comes again we know that uh, God will speak through him to us and we will be indeed in a place. Again on, on behalf of our pastoral staff we want to thank the uh, praise team of, uh, for the hard work of our ministry uh, music you know, director Tracy and her team 
uh, who actually um, you know, make our uh, worship services uh, really blessing you know, to us. And so at this time, we are going to pray, and we're going to pray about the situation that's going on in our world, and of course, uh, pray for one another, uh, you know, one another. So please join me as we uh, bring this uh, special time uh, you know, to God today. Father, we want to pray about the coronavirus that is decimating this world. We know it's not your desire and will to see our world go in this direction. We know this is the result of sin. But Father, we are experiencing some very difficult uh, uh, hardships uh, at this time. There are so many of our uh, loved ones that have moved on because of this, and uh, many of us are in very uh, difficult uh, situations at this time because of this virus. Lord, what we know for sure is that you are aware, and you see a God who knows, a God who sees, a God who is ever-present with us. And so we bring this you know, situation to you, and we ask that you will help us, Father, to uh, be a people of prayer, of humility, people of hope also, so that we can give this world the hope that this world needs at this time. We want to take this moment to pray for our elected officers and for all the hard work they're doing. We ask that you will bless them from the federal all the way down to our local uh, authorities. Uh, they're working hard and we appreciate all the efforts that they're doing. Our first responders, our uh, medical team, Lord, you know how hard they are working. Some who have retired have again just uh, enlisted to uh, support uh, you know, the ongoing uh, activity of uh, the medical attention that is being offered to our world now and we pray for them for their safety, our nurses, our doctors, uh, Lord, all those who are on the front lines, we ask that you will bless them. And bless us as we continue to uh, support this ministry and support the work that uh, you're doing through our church. And for this hour, Lord, we pray that your spirit will move, touch us wherever we are, as we allow you to refresh us. All this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's continue to serve the Lord. Amen.
Psalm 18, verses 1 to 3. Psalm 18, 1 to 3. And I want you to pay particular attention to some of the uh, descriptions of God, particularly at this time when we are all in panic and fear. I want you to listen to what the psalmist has to say to us. And so as we give our offerings, we give with confidence, knowing that we serve a God who is everything that we're going, I'm going to read you know, to your hearing. Uh, Psalm 18, verses 1 to 3. I love you, O Lord. Number one, my strength. The Lord is number two, my rock. The Lord is number three, my fortress. The Lord is number four, my deliverer. And the Lord is number five, the one in whom I take refuge. I call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised and I am saved from my enemies. And so I want you to know that we serve a God who is our strength, a God who is our rock, a God who is our fortress, a God who is our deliverer, and a God who is our refuge. These descriptions to me just tell us everything about the God that we serve. We can run to him when we are in panic mode. We can run to him when we are in distress. We can run to him when we are happy and joyful because he is always there for us. And finally, we can praise him. And so I'm going to ask you to bow your heads as we thank God for your faithfulness. You know, we need all the support you can now offer your church as we continue to pay the bills and do everything that God has placed upon our hearts to do here for him. And I, you know, again, we want to thank you for your faithfulness. Gracious Lord, we thank you for the blessings that we continue to receive from you in spite of what that we go through. We ask of God that during this time when we uh, decide to give a portion of the blessings you, you've given us to you, that, Lord, you will touch our hearts and our minds, that we will be generous in giving, knowing that when we give, you will also bless us. And particularly, you have given us first, and everything that we give you, Lord, is what you have blessed us with. And so bless us in all that we do, as we give online, as we mail our, in our offerings, and as we just drop the envelopes here. Whatever option is easier for us, Lord, we just want to thank you. And so we praise you, we love you, because we ask all this. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord.
They cried out to the Lord and they said to Moses, why did you bring us out here to die in the wilderness? Weren't there enough graves for us in Egypt? What have you done to us? Why did you make us leave Egypt? Didn't we tell you this would happen while we were still in Egypt? We said, leave us alone. Let us be slaves to the Egyptians. It's better to be a slave in Egypt than a corpse in the wilderness. But Moses told the people, don't be afraid. Just stand still and watch the Lord rescue you today. The Egyptians you see today will never be seen again. The Lord himself will fight for you. Amen. Just stay calm. Then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the people to get moving. Pick up your staff and raise your hand over the sea. Divide the water so the Israelites can walk through the middle of the sea on dry land. Then Moses raised his hand over the sea and the Lord opened up a path through the water with a strong east wind. The wind blew all night turning the seabed into dry land. So the people of Israel walked through the middle of the sea on dry ground with walls of water on each side. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. You know, a lot of people spend a lot of time wondering, worrying, when their time is. How much longer do I have to live? When is the Lord going to call me home? Is this COVID-19 going to be my swan song? And on and on and on. Let me see if I can help you a little bit with that. Until you have fulfilled God's divine purpose for your life, you are invincible. Now, I'm not suggesting you start going around licking doorknobs because you think you got this <laughs> virus thing in a headlock. I didn't say you should tempt the hand of fate. First thing you need to get clear about is your divine purpose can only be revealed by God. He gave it to you. He's the one who will tell you what it is. He may not tell you just what you want to hear. What he tells you might not necessarily be when you want to hear it, but he'll tell you. The second thing is, either way, you need to be very clear that it's God talking to you. See, just because you get the urge to do something, no matter how strong that urge might be, it doesn't necessarily mean that God's speaking. When we were <laughs> young kids hanging out on the block on 15th Street in Washington, D.C., where I grew up, I should say where, when I was, where I was raised, my wife sometimes tells me I haven't grown up yet. Anyway, dark <laughs> was that magic time when you came home. See, nobody worried about you much in between the time you left and dark. Because there just weren't the same kind of Looney Tunes running around out there then as there are now. But when it was time to come home, if you weren't there, your mom was going to be calling. Hmm. No, not on your phone. Cell phones hadn't even been invented yet. You know, <laughs> I know that's a concept that's a little incomprehensible to the millennials right now. Hmm. But there was a point in time when calling somebody meant exactly that, calling them, like, hey, Pastor Daniel. You know. <laughs> anyway, when your mother called you, there was no doubt in your mind about whose voice it was. You knew your mother's voice. There was no confusion. When you get confused about whether you heard the voice you heard was the voice of God or not, probably wasn't him. John 10, verses 3 through 5, explains it like this. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep recognize his voice and come to him. 
He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. After he has gathered his own flock, he walks ahead of them and they follow him because they know his voice. If you're a child of the king, when he calls you, you will hear him, you will recognize his voice, and you'll answer. You need to stay close to God. We are his sheep. He is the good shepherd. We need to follow him. Following him means going where he wants us to go, not where we want him to go. It reminds me of that old song where he leads me, I will follow. We want to pick and choose where and when we go. And then if it gets too tough, we want God to follow us. Hmm. <laughs> That's not how this works. If we're serious, then God gets to choose the who and what and where and when and why. We either believe that or we don't. Belief is the foundation of our faith. And our faith reminds us that God is in charge. We're not. He reminds us very simply in Psalm 46.10, be still and know that I am God. And because he's God, he will protect you until you have fulfilled his divine purpose for your life. We just need to follow him and not panic. Colonel Ferguson, and most of you know him as Sam, and Dennis and I were having a conversation the other day, and like most everyone else, especially a couple of two, three ex-military guys standing around talking, we're talking about COVID-19, mm -hmm. okay? that whole situation. The colonel reminded us that in this situation, just like in most other situations, there's always a certain number of people who can panic. Okay? Perhaps it's just human nature, I don't know. Either way, it reminded him of his favorite line from the Marine Corps that he shared with us. And there was this gunnery sergeant who turned to his troops that he was leading and said, you, 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 panic. The rest of you, come with me. We don't need to panic. We don't need to doubt. Doubt comes from uncertainty. Uncertainty comes from fear. And fear comes from a lack of control. When I was around three, four years old, I was still just a little tender little. My Uncle Matt, my mother's brother, would throw me up in the air. Now, understand, he wasn't tossing me just a foot or two up in the air like most other ordinary people would have done. This guy was tossing me like 10 feet <laughs> up in the air. This would frighten my mother terribly. Right. I, however, thought it was awesome. I would scream to high heaven. You know, my mother and I were both screaming. Okay? I was screaming because it felt like I was coming off the top loop of a roller coaster. You know? My mother was screaming because she had this terrifying vision that my uncle would not catch me. Screaming, my screaming, by the way, didn't help my mother's panic one bit. Why did my mother panic? Because she wasn't in control. I have some good news for you. She wasn't. But God is. Don't forget who God is. Don't forget what God can do. Here's what we can learn about what God can do. Mark 4, verses 35 to 41. As evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, let's cross to the other side of the lake. So they took Jesus in the boat and started out, leaving the crowds behind, although some other boats followed. But soon a fierce storm came up. High waves were breaking into the boat, and it began to fill with water. Jesus was sleeping in the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. The disciples woke him up, shouting, Teacher, don't you care that we're going to drown? When Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Silence, be still. 
Suddenly, the wind stopped, and there was a great calm. Then he asked them, Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? The disciples were absolutely terrified. Who is this man? They asked each other. Even the wind and the waves obey him. So let me ask you a question. If he can tame a fierce storm and calm the raging waters, do you think, no, do you believe he can tame a raging virus? That storm didn't catch him by surprise, and neither did COVID-19. Sometimes I think we act like someone else created this universe. Then God got his PhD in world management so he could take charge of this big dirt ball that we live on. So maybe he missed a day or two in class, and that's when the lesson in world panic was being taught. Maybe that postulation, that, that, that scenario, accounts for our lack of faith, our cloudy insight. I'd like to share something with you that I, I hope will help in establishing a context that will help support you in dealing with this COVID-19 reality. This is an excerpt from a letter written by that great pastor, reformer, philosopher, Martin Luther. And he wrote it to Reverend Dr. John Hess. Here's what he wrote. I shall ask God mercifully to protect us. Then I shall fumigate, help purify the air, administer medicine, and take it. I shall avoid places and persons where my presence is not needed in order to not become contaminated and thus perchance inflict and pollute others and so cause their death as a result of my negligence. If God should wish to take me, he will surely find me. And I have done what he has expected of me, and so I am not responsible for either my own death or the death of others. If my neighbor needs me, however, I shall not avoid place or person, but will go freely as stated above. See, this is such a God-fearing faith because it is neither brash nor foolhardy and does not tempt God. Martin Luther wrote those words over 500 years ago in response to questions about the Black Death Plague. We need to stop running when no one's chasing us. Proverbs 28.1 tells us the wicked run away when no one is chasing them, but the godly are as bold as lions. God's got this. If he can part the Red Sea, turn it into dry land, let 600,000 men, not including women, children, animals, carts, cross over on dry land for almost 12 hours, you think maybe he can handle a virus? If he could get the entire nation of Israel on the other side of the Red Sea, do you believe he can get us on the other side of COVID-19? Listen to me. He assigned you your divine purpose for one reason. He wanted you to accomplish it. It's not his plan to have anything or anybody stop you until you're done until you've completed his divine purpose for your life. I told you earlier, you have to follow God. You have to stay close to the Father. The position of safety is near to God. James 4 eight says, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Let me remind you again, God's got this. You want to run somewhere? Run to him. Isaiah 43, 13 says, from eternity to eternity, I am God. No one can snatch anyone out of my hand. No one can undo what I have done. John 10, 29 says, for my father has given them to me, and he is more powerful than anyone else. No one can snatch them from the father's hand. 
Do we need to be careful? Yes, we do. Do we need to take reasonable precaution regarding where we go, what we do, who we do it with? Yes, we do. Do we need to remember who is in control here? Yes, we do. We are in a crisis. And yes, we are in a storm. But there ain't no storm that can change how this is. Let's pray. Father God, we come before your throne of grace and we come as always to first thank you, to lift you up and give you all the thanks and the praise and the glory because all the glory belongs to you. Yes. All the praise belongs to you. And we thank you, Father God, for having brought us safely thus far, not only through this journey of coronavirus, of COVID-19, but for all our life. God, we pray that you would make us ever mindful of your divine purpose for our life. We pray that you would guide our feet and direct our path, Lord, that we may not stray into the path of sin and unrighteousness. Mm. Watch over us through this day, Lord. You ask a special blessing on everyone who is physically here, everyone who is electronically here, we ask that you would add a special blessing to their life. And God, we pray that nothing, no circumstance would hinder us from going forth with the good news, not the good news that there is a solution to COVID-19 even better news, mm. even better news, the good news of salvation and eternal life in Jesus Christ. Mm. God, we thank you for the opportunity to be where you are. We thank you for the opportunity to join in what you are doing. Give us the strength, the insight, the perseverance, Father God, to stay focused and do that as you commanded as part of your divine purpose for our life. All these things we ask because we know you're able, and in faith we say thank you because we know that you will. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
so much. Praise him and thank you, Reverend Duachino. This was a very stirring message. I was so blessed. I was so refreshed. And I hope you two were. This is a message of encouragement, a message of hope. And I hope we can take this message and again electronically share this message uh, through the telephone, uh, email, whatever it is, with those who were unable to uh, even hear this. Again, this message will be ready and it will be um, online. You can actually access it uh, on uh, after Monday afternoon uh, from uh, our, our website. And so again, there are other ways you can actually uh, listen and tune in to this in the message. Uh, I hope you are blessed as I was and thank you, praise team. That was really you know, uh, awesome. Uh, I don't want you to go right now because as soon as we're done, there's going to be a, a, a piano you know, postlude uh, from uh, our one and only Enoch, and I hope that you will be refreshed by that. And so we just want you to be blessed spiritually, mentally, physically, whatever it is, because this is something that you need for the week ahead. And thank you again. This message, uh, I, I, again, I was so blessed. Uh, it, indeed, it is true that uh, the way God you know, took the Israelites and walked them through that, it's such a blessing and it's such you know, powerful. I'm going to conclude our time. And let me remind you again uh, that uh, the giving options that uh, we spoke about uh, online, uh, also you can mail it in or you can just uh, drop your, your offering uh, in, the, uh, in the church office. You know, whatever it is, we just want to say thank you because you've been faithful. And God is faithful. And God will walk us through this. And we will come out emerge stronger than actually you know, when it all began. So why don't you bow your heads with me as we just complete our time. Gracious Master, what a joy it is for us to be in your presence wherever we are. For you are God whose presence is everywhere. The omnipresent God. Thank you. The omniscient God. The God who knows everything. And the omnipotent God. The God who is ever powerful. We thank you that we can come to you. Even in this time of fear and panic and anxiety. We know there is somebody. His name is Jesus Christ. And we can rest assured in his goodness in his mercy in his love and ultimately in his salvation for us and so now may the god who knows everything and the god who is ever powerful to save us go with you and may the god of peace just shine the peace on you and may the god of love just take you in his arms of love and bless you in the days and the months and the years ahead as we allow him to use us for his glory all this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless you and enjoy this uh, person.
Thank you. God bless you.